Welcome to our latest episode, weighing the pros and cons of managing your own trust or foundation. In this episode, I'm gonna be talking about the risks of managing your own trust or foundation. Listen, I understand that most people are reluctant to hand over their hard-earned wealth to a third party, which is why many are so interested in managing their own trust or foundation. Well, this comes with the obvious benefit of control that's really about the only advantage. I'm gonna explain the disadvantages of managing your own trust or foundation and what you can do to avoid them while retaining some level of control or at least influence. Welcome to the Wealth Uncensored podcast, straight talk about everything that impacts your wealth. In each episode, I share what I've learned through my own experience and two decades of helping high net worth clients structure their affairs to minimize taxes and protect their assets for the next generation. I'll also feature special guests who are experts in their own field, sharing their knowledge and experience to help you protect what's yours. I'm your host, Jimmy Sexton. Let's dive into today's show. So first, let's talk about the tax risk. Where is the structure going to be managed from? If your structure is in a tax advantage jurisdiction, which it likely will be, right, in a jurisdiction that doesn't have any income taxes, we need to look at where it's managed from as well. Because if you're managing your structure that's in a tax-free jurisdiction from within a country that has taxes, you have the risk of that country taking the position that because your trust or foundation is being managed from within that country, it's a tax resident within that country, right? So let's say, for example, you have a trust or foundation in Guernsey, but you're a German tax resident and managing your trust or foundation from within Germany, Germany could take the position that your trust or foundation is really a German tax resident and therefore subject to German taxes because it's being managed and controlled there, okay? Now, another risk is, let's say, for example, you have substantial control over the trust or foundation. So let's say you can decide who gets distributions, when, and how much. Well, some tax authorities may try to argue that the assets are really still yours, right, and disregard the structure. The risk of that happening is that the wealth that's housed within the structure is still considered yours. And you would be liable for any wealth taxes on that, any gift taxes on that, as well as any income taxes on the income generated by the wealth within the trust or foundation. You obviously don't want that. Another risk is an asset protection risk. So a, a creditor or a litigant could, for example, argue that because you still have control over the asset, they're really still yours and therefore can be accessed to pay your debts. Or a court could order you, for example, to just distribute all the assets to yourself, assuming you're a beneficiary, and settle the debt. Also not a great outcome, right? You also have privacy concerns. If you're on the board of your structure, you're likely going to appear in beneficial owner registers, thereby reducing your privacy. And privacy is a key to asset protection because people can't get what they don't know you have, right? Now, another risk is proper administration and corporate governance. So most people lack the requisite knowledge and experience to properly manage a trust or foundation. These are complex structures that require specialized knowledge to properly administer. If you don't manage it properly, that's going to cause issues, right? They could say, well, it's not being managed properly, therefore we're going to disregard it, right? So to ensure that your trust or foundation provides the maximum benefits, it needs to be respected as a separate entity and properly administrated. Like I said, if not, you risk the structure not being recognized and you lose all the benefits. Another risk that's often overlooked is outside pressure. So let's say, for example, you're solely in control of your trust or foundation, right? You may come under unwanted pressure from beneficiaries who want distributions. And if you don't make the distributions, they could get upset. Or maybe you make unequal distributions to beneficiaries and they get upset because one of them didn't get as much as somebody else. So it may be advantageous and more comfortable for you to say that it wasn't your decision, right? I mean, it gives you a little bit of distance. You may also come under pressure or feel obligated by business associates to make certain business decisions, investments, or divestments. 
Again, it may be more advantageous or comfortable for you to be able to say it wasn't your decision, or at least not your decision alone, right? Now, while it is possible to be involved in the management of your structure and reduce the above risks, it takes careful planning. For example, you need to properly structure your board. And I'm gonna do a, a future episode on that, so, so stay tuned to, to, to make sure that you learn about how to properly structure your board. So, like I said, in order to avoid some of these risks, you shouldn't have control alone. There should be more than one board member. It shouldn't all be up to you. And you can make it so that the board members need to act jointly rather than independently so no one person has too much control. There should be a requirement that board members must be in different countries so that control can't be exercised alone within one country. That will help reduce the risk that that country claims that the structure is a tax resident there and subject it to tax there. Therefore, it's also important to have board members located in, in different jurisdictions, right? Now, I also think it's very important to include someone on the board that has relevant experience administering trusts and foundations to ensure proper administration and corporate governance. Now, another option is obviously that you don't serve on the board at all and you install professionals or a combo of family members, trusted advisors, and professionals, and that you take the role of a protector. A protector's role is to oversee the board and ensure that the board is acting in the best interest of the trust or foundations. Protectors often have a, a wide array of powers. For example, the power to remove and replace board members, the power to approve distributions, right? So if the board wants to make a distribution, the protector has to approve it or to approve transactions over a certain amount, right? So if the board wants to make a transaction that goes over whatever that defined threshold is, they would need you, your approval as the protector. Or for example, that the trust or foundation can't be amended without the consent of the protector, which is you. There's a host of other powers a protector can have, but they are beyond the scope of this episode. Being a protector is a great way to maintain some level of control and influence without having ultimate control. This personally is my preferred method for avoiding the risks of self-management that we've discussed in this episode. So just to recap, I understand people's desire to retain control and self-manage their structures. But with the disadvantages, I think that the disadvantages really outweigh the advantages. In my view, it is much better to retain influence rather than control by either serving as one of several board members or as the protector. There are many ingenious ways to structure the management of a trust or foundation. It just takes careful thought and planning to achieve the right balance of control while not compromising the benefit. I hope you found this episode useful and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Thank you for joining me on Wealth Uncensored, where we help you minimize taxes and protect your wealth for the next generation. If you like our show, be sure to subscribe and leave a review. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, We'd love to hear from you. You can email us at info at esquiregroup.com. And don't forget to visit Esquire Group's website for more information on how we can help you secure your wealth. I'll be dropping knowledge again next week. Don't forget to join us.